Hi, my name is Arndt von Königsmark and I like to give you a brief introduction to my new plugin People in Motion for Cinema 4D 13 and 14. First of all about the installation. All you have to do is to unzip the files you have received after purchase to the uh, plugins folder within the Cinema 4D installation so that you end up with a people in motion folder here including all the plugin components needed. A separate mail will give you an unlock plugin as well so place this inside this people in motion folder as well and you will receive a download for a special library so just place this within the library browser folder so the people in motion library is placed here and you have access through the cinema 4d content browser after all this is done just start up cinema 4d and there you will have several places where you find the new components so of course within the plugins menu you can find the two different character objects and the motion manager with this the heart and soul of this plugin you will find several new channel shaders but in the end you don't have to deal with them they just help out with some settings you um, access through the character objects and of course you have some new library within the content browser so you can see that within the presets there should be a new people in motion folder and from there you have access to all the uh, props and of course the characters that come with the plugin you can see that we have about five different male and five different female characters here and a couple of props uh, such as hairstyles and um, briefcase and trolleys and so on to um, add them to your characters just for more variations. Of course you can also add your own props to the characters as we will see in a minute. So first thing you need is the motion cloud object just by double clicking on it. This one includes some simple polygon objects and um, those points included there um, just store the um, the mocap data for the animations so this is um, maybe an easy way to exchange different kind of motions or to add motion sets later on to this kind of plugin so of course this is needed to make uh, the characters work. After that we need a character of course you just have to choose the one you like by double clicking and loading it to your scene and then you can already decide to maybe add some hairstyle just by double clicking and maybe some other prop as well such as a scarf for instance. Switching back to the objects manager you can see that we now have those three new objects here and uh, to make this work we have to add this motion manager here and to group the character objects below and the last thing to do is to add a tag to it the unlock motions tag. This one is the one you got by a separate mail so you can unlock all the functionality here. To attach props such as the hair or the scarf to the character just click on the character object and you can see that there is a motion and props tab so you can just drag and drop the objects you would like to attach to your character to those link fields here. So in our case we have some hairstyle and we have a scarf so this one should be attached to the neck. After this is done we have a brief look at our motions manager. You can see that freeze motion 
is switched on so that the uh, operation of this motion manager is switched off right now. So by activating this you can see that now the props jump into place and by clicking play you can see that our character already starts to do something. The kind of motion we see here is controlled by the character object itself. So you can see by switching to the motion and props tab again that we have different kinds or types of motion. We have static types and we have dynamic types. Static types means that the character will more or less stay in place. So we can see that we have a couple of animations here. So just some kind of animations. So say hello to someone passing by, having a short conversation here, talking to each other, different kinds of waiting animations, just looking around, just uh, idle standing. Of course also sitting animations from within a movie theater maybe, working on a laptop and so on. You can just switch to them any kind you like. And of course we have those dynamic animations as well. So we can see that we have different kind of motion speeds for those. Slow, medium and fast depending on how fast your character should move. Regarding the dynamic type of animations, we have to set up a starting point for those. So this is done from within the Start and Pass tab. So just move the character wherever you would like to uh, have the starting point for the animation and just use the Set Start Position button. If you already have couple of, par uh, of um, characters in your scene group below the motions manager. You don't have to uh, tick this start position button for every character. You can just do this by this one button from within the motions manager. Just project and fix positions to fix all the grouped characters at once. So that from now on the characters know where they have to start. This allows us to scrub through animations, which is, makes it more comfortable. You can also choose to speed up the editor by switching off all the deformations and the mesh display. So you will only see the uh, joint setup of the characters. This makes sense if you have quite a number of characters already in your scene. So the editor will not come down with the redraw speed too much. So just don't forget to switch it back on for rendering. To add some more variations to your characters, you can add some motion offsets by switching to the options tab of the character object. So you can see here can add some offset so that the character starts with a different kind of pose. This is important if you have a couple of characters starting at a similar position walking in uh, the same direction so they don't walk all the same. You can also add some size variations but in the end it's more comfortable to use the motion manager for this. As you can see you can also set the character size and the motion offset from here by adding some randomized variations. So if you have a couple of dozen characters grouped below you can just tick the random motion offset and random size button here to add some more variations to the characters. After that you can of course come back here and edit those uh, randomized settings again. Another kind of variations uh, you can add 
is about the coloring. By rendering you can see that um, the t-shirt and trousers colors can be controlled from within the character object itself. This is possible because we have some additional plugins here inside the material. So having a look at the female body material you can see that there's a layers shader and this one includes some people in motion shaders to control the coloring of the different components of the clothes. So you don't have to go back to the material and you don't have to have a separate material for every male or female character. So just one for female and one for male, which in the end, of course, helps to save up memory. So all you have to do is add some uh, variations here or some other colors you would like to use. Sometimes it's or it's needed to update uh, the material system as you can see here but by rendering in the uh, picture view you can see that this one is always up to date with the um, settings regarding the colors so if you like to have an update here just move in time for one frame and you can see that all the materials are now updated for these color settings here you can do this with the shoe color as well and the trousers colors as seen before and also with the hair. So in case you have some hair attached to the character, you can see that the hair materials also use a layer shader and there we have two different kind of hair colors, some more blonde and some more brown hair style and these uh, special people motion hair shader here works as a layer mask between them. So this is the only color tick you have here for the hair that doesn't add color to the uh, hair object but works as an alpha. So you just have to use gray scale uh, values here to make this work. So in case we have some more bright setting it will be more to the blonde material and some darker setting will be more to the brown hair color so in this case i switch to a more bright hair color as you can see here so this is about uh, just a, a short demo of how you would start to work with the plugins you can add as many characters as you like to this menu just to show you how to add another one just double click in this case the uh, male frank here just group it under the motions manager and you already are done you can see that the character is standing here in front and of course you can choose any kind of motion for him as well so that you have now two different characters in your scene and every one of them of course doing different kind of stuff.